Alright guys, sorry about the background noise. I got the heat going in here. Got pretty chilly overnight and got down to like 60 in the shop. Uh, I showed you guys putting a little bit of the base coat on the doors. There's just no room over here, as you can see, for me to set up a camera. The truck's there and all the parts are here, so. Uh, everything turned out pretty good. I don't see anything that I missed. I had a couple spots that were light on edges that I burned through and had put uh, some sealer over, but I think I've got them all hidden. Everything has got three coats on it and then one coat for good measure at the end of it, just to make sure. I cannot see any primer showing through where this hood was spot primed. Now it looks like it's got some lines going through it, but it's got three coats going this way and a last coat going the other way. I don't think this is going to be a problem. I've dealt with this before. I don't see any uh, metallics that are all bunched up or anything on it. Now these doors, <clears throat> you guys know I paint in a really dirty shop. That's an attic access for here and it was windy and there was dust coming down and I had dust that landed in here. And uh, what I did was I took one of those 800 grit soft pads and just scuffed it off and put one more coat of base on it. And it actually, it came out good. You guys can see these doors are about as straight as they're gonna be. Um, I only got three coats on the inside. They already had uh, minimal body work in there, so it's also the inside of the truck. As long as they didn't have any gray spots showing through, you know, if it's a little lighter, it's a little lighter. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I tend to be very overcautious when it comes to base coat, and I also let these continue to flash overnight. Usually you wait a half an hour to an hour after putting base on, but when I've got four coats on something, I just let it go overnight, I walk away. Plus I was getting pretty tired. But I think it's nice and dark. It should come out good. We're gonna use the Southern Polyurethane Zero 2020 at a four to one to one ratio. And I have got slow activator which since the last time I bought it, which was several months back, they changed the name from all over activator to slow. So it's the same activator, it's 5003-4, 5003-4. Um, I've got a gallon and I've got a, a, just a little bit left in this gallon, so I'm gonna finish that up first. Uh, one thing I did miss, I think I might have mentioned it, I worked quite a bit on this cowl panel, getting the dents out of this side, and when I blocked it, I didn't notice anything on this side, but there's a little pecker dent in it right there, like a little hail dent. It's time to let it fly because it's gonna get dented up anyway, but I'm not redoing that panel at this point, so. There's also a little bitty low spot right at the corner of that mirror, probably from the square plastic that goes under it and that mirror getting squinched down, pushes down on it. So, not worried about it. All these edges are good because the belt molding or the window scraper only comes around maybe quarter or three eighths of an inch. So you gotta make sure you get those edges. And then for the windows, uh, you really gotta make sure that that's good because the rubber barely touches the edge of that. Um, the wing window covers quite a bit, but you got to make sure you got it. And the other thing is the inside focus, inside door panel has a screw that goes through there like a just a sheet metal screw. So you got to make sure you at least get this corner and I've got it taped back behind where the trim clips go in or farther in I should say. That way when you put the door panel on, everything is painted. You don't have to worry about it because what happens is the factory plastic that they cover the door with on the inside hangs down outside of the door panel. So there was adhesive and stuff in there. I had to make sure I got all that off. So I'm gonna let it warm up and I'm gonna bring you guys back for getting that first coat of clear on at least on some of the pieces parts. I 
Yamada LPH 400. About 28, 30 pounds, and with the silver cap and a 1.4 tip. So that's it for now. I'll bring you guys back once I get the clear ready to go. All right, we had to knock the audio out of this one. I'll just do a little quick voiceover for you and throw some music in. Um, previous video, I had gotten the base coat on these, and I just ran out of time. I wanted to get a little bit more done, but I just didn't have the time or energy to do it, so figured we'd start with clearing all the pieces parts here and uh, using the Iwata, my favorite go-to gun, and the SPI Universal, or not Universal, this is Euro Clear, um, reduced 4 to 1 to 1, and this stuff really lays down good. Um, not using a full trigger pull on this gun, maybe about two and a half to three turns out, and uh, it seems like with this clear, uh, I speed up my passes and use a real, real tight overlap, like about 80%, uh, at least 75, and it lays out really nice. Get a run every once in a while, but um, I want to say it's probably about 80 degrees in the shop here today 75 something like that uh, able to have the door open um, the other reason I didn't clear these doors uh, right after I based them in the previous video is it was nighttime and it's spring and the bugs are out so I didn't want to get a bunch of bugs stuck in it so we'll get this stuff cleared out and uh, we'll show you what it looks like in the end so enjoy please rate subscribe thumbs up thumbs down it's all good leave a comment thanks
All right, the last segment you just saw was me putting a third coat on the hood. Everything else got two. And I'll show you the fenders first. They came out really good. Um, very, very good, as a matter of fact. I don't have any sags. I was worried that I would get a soupy sagger running through that body line, but it it's good. I love this color too. Some guys like red, green happens to be the one for me, especially these dark greens that are sneaking up on almost being black. Some trash, you know, nothing too crazy. Some of this landed after I put it outside. I kind of waited about half an hour till this stuff was not tacky anymore and out of dust. Um, it's gonna get scuffed over anyway and polished, but I didn't want any uh, birds crapping on it immediately. Hopefully we alleviate that problem. I was also worried that I would get a big gobber coming through here and I actually, I did really good. This is a driver's door, it actually, I think, uh, you guys probably can't see that. There is just the start of a little goober there. Everything else is good. This body line down here didn't get any sags in it. But the passenger door, I must have got a little heavy handed right here. I got a, got a sagger right there. And I got another one. This is the, you ain't putting runs in it. You ain't trying hard enough. Here's another one. Comes back from about there and goes. But, yeah, you know, no big deal. I didn't get any runs in here. Started to sag just a little bit above that, but um, nothing coming down out of them. So, I'm really, uh, I'm pretty pleased with this stuff. Again, it's not all perfect, but it looks pretty good. I'm waiting for that hood to flash off. I got the heat running. It's about 78 in there. It's about 75 outside, but um, inside the building is cold. What I did, and you guys noticed I only really showed you doing a little work on the doors and the hood. I painted these small parts first. They were on the other side of the shop. And then I waited till they were out of dust and I shoved them out the door. Because um, what's happening, I'm building up so much overspray painting all these little parts in there. I couldn't see so I just I shoved these two things out the door and then I finished the fenders and shoved them out the door and then I worked on the doors in the hood and once the doors had two coats on them I shoved them out the door and then I waited a while and uh, I really laid a third coat on that hood because I'm gonna block it pretty hard so it looks right on you know a little bit of peel whatever I'm not worried about the doors I want that hood to look nice though so I figured an extra coat you guys can maybe see it looks all goobery down here but it's that's the seam sealer where I brushed over it over that uh, seam down there so everything else it looks as good as it needs to look oh look at that I got a little dripper coming off of that ain't no thing though not worried about it all in all those came out real nice kind of peacocking around them here I'm happy I was uh a little nervous at first because those doors had a large area of bodywork. Not that it was very thick, but should block out nice. And getting them out in the sun like this, that'll suck the solvents out of those. I'll be able to uh, sand and polish those tomorrow or the next day if I have time. At least uh, get them outside for the day tomorrow if I can, if the weather's supposed to be good. It's Sunday. Now, and I did not mask off these openings in the door either. I blew these doors out the best I could. I figured if a little dust got on the inside, I wasn't too worried. But the way I masked the tops, kind of blocked off most of it so that if anything shot up, um, hopefully that would catch most of it. And it did. They're not full of garbage. The hood's got trash in it because it was laying flat. But amazingly enough, usually the tops of the fenders are what gets it in the hood. Uh, not vertical panels, but you know, this stuff's pretty clean. Um, this panel's real clean. This one's, you can't even see it, it's too bright outside, but there's a little bit of trash in it here and there. So I'll scuff it off the ends. I'm not going to try and buff that panel, it's not worth your time. You might as well repaint it if you're really concerned.
All right, I'll bring you back when it's time to paint the bed. All right, still got the exhaust running in here. Uh, I think I showed in a previous clip, all these parts were setting outside. And I told you I would bring you back for painting the bed. Well, things got kind of rushed. Uh, rain was coming. So I just went ahead and got it painted. Here you go. Um, this is just Valspar polyurethane and not the kind of stuff that comes on the shelf at Home Depot. It almost looks black. Camera is going to show it black. I don't even see any metallic in it, but it's once it gets out in the sun, it might look a little bit better. I mean, it's not without its flaws, but it's got some orange peel in it. It's not disgusting. No runs. Although in full disclosure, I had the bed up and I had plastic over it and I was trying to stand on the frame down there with the bed up about, you know, almost touching the ceiling and I bumped my shoulder against it in the front. But I had a little bit of color left and I put some reducer in it and hit it and honestly it melted it right out. So there you go. I mean, it's dark, but in this... I bet once this gets in the sun, it really pops. I mean, hell, you can still see all the pits and all the crap in the top of it, right where the stake bed uh, sides go and all that. But really, once this whole truck's back together, it's gonna look pretty good. And then I know I showed these parts outside, which really, I don't know that it did them justice. I guess you can see the light in there and a little peel in it but you know no more than factory I'm happy with that I'm gonna take the trash out of it and the runs that are in the doors or in the one door in the passenger door everything else is everything else is nice and shiny hopefully I don't come in tomorrow and it's all died back but I think it'll be just fine so there you go, I'll get this one chooched up for you and the next video is probably gonna be spraying the cab of that truck or maybe even finish sanding it, who knows. So catch you guys next time. Rate, subscribe if you like and uh, we'll catch you later.